Good morning, good evening, and good day. Thank you for watching Attack Power Gaming. Today, we are going to be going to the next part of our How to Get Good at Steel Division 2 series with Infantry Micro. How to use those infantry to get the most out of them and win lots of battles. Let's dive right in. So the first step when microing your infantry is to make sure you send the correct infantry into the correct places. I know this isn't exactly a micro thing, but the if we don't get the macro ideas correct, then there's not a lot that your infantry micro is going to do to save you. So first off, we can see here, I have several flamethrowers here, and they are all going into this woods. I am not sending them out into the middle of nowhere to do nothing. I want to get them into a position where they actually can reach their, their targets. I have some more flamethrowers over here. And they're coming right into here so that I can walk them towards their target. This is a dangerous spot, though, because they can be shot from a lot of different angles here. So it's not a great flamethrower spot, but I don't think I'm going to make it all the way up to here. The guys I'm sending up there are some of these uh, Pangevinictums and Stimschutzen, which are also close-range infantry as well. Or perhaps those are flamethrowers. Can't really tell with all the green lines there. But that is the first step to this, is making sure that you deploy your infantry to the correct areas that they can be the most effective. I have shoots in which are long range infantry coming into these houses and stuff. I'm not sending shoots in into this woods. Why? Because they'll just lose to any CQC infantry I run into. CQC is close quarters combat for those who don't know. So the next thing with infantry Mike and we can see I actually make this mistake here is to try not to select all your units. So what I did here, I selected them in a square, I pressed Q to make attack move, and I just clicked forward. This is not a, this is a very bad way to actually command your troops. What's gonna happen is they're gonna move in this box and they're gonna like auto, they're gonna kind of form up in an auto formation. And these auto formations are horrendous. They're so bad. If you if you select if I selected all of these guys and told them all to attack me with this guy, for whatever reason the commander, the leader here would be the he would go first. Literally, it would automatically send him to the front of the pack, which is not where you want your your leader to be. So it's really important that whenever possible, you try to command your troops in no more than groups of two. This is a very small thing. It, it seems dumb, but it's really important. When I command these guys in twos, they'll just go basically next to each other. So they would have attacked here and here. By sending them in a group of four, instead they create this square. And what's going to happen is my flamethrowers are going to run into enemy troops in groups of two. Instead of all four of them, which was the whole point to me sending four flamer, flamen warfers over here in the first place, was so they could actually attack them all at once. I don't want them deployed in groups of two like this. I want them to attack all at once. So what you really should do is try to select them only in groups of two. This is a very specific micro thing, and you probably wouldn't know this unless you play the game long enough. Don't just select everyone and tell them to attack. I mean, yes, at times the lack of time or the fastness of your reaction may demand such a move, but when you can, whenever possible, try to select in groups of one or two only if you want them to actually hit your opponent's troops at the same time, because otherwise they're going to create these weird formations, especially if you're selecting leaders. You do not want to select leaders with your other troops, because then they definitely will do stupid things. Make sure that you are selecting them individually like this, uh, not like this, to attack all at the same time because you want your troops to hit at once and not be picked off in little groups. So I want to point out something here that my opponent did that was really smart and I this was a very good opponent. He, uh, he gave me a very hard time in this game. He actually won at the end of it. So he attacked with his sapri across the road here. He started to get pinned down recognized that he was outgunned and immediately fell back his troops. So you see here, there's barely any suppression on this infantry unit. He could have easily taken some more fire, but the point of the matter was he wasn't going to survive anyway. He wasn't going to successfully get past this, get across this road here. So there's really no reason to keep trying. He immediately hits the, the retreat button and falls back because otherwise he would have just died. He would have got pinned down here in the middle of the road and basically melted to my shoots in here. This is really important to do. Don't hold out and wait till your infantry is fully suppressed to retreat them. There are plenty of times where just immediately retreating them is the correct move instead of waiting until they've taken a ton of damage or have reached full suppression. You can also see here, basically whenever I move my infantry, I'm moving them with an attack move. I'm never walking them through the forest unless I really don't want them to stop. So leaders, a lot of times I will just move because I don't want them shooting at enemy troops. In fact, the leader is usually put on return fire so that they will not initiate combat with enemy troops because that's not their, that's not their role. Their role is to pump up your other troops and make them stronger. So don't don't walk your troops unless you specifically don't want them to attack things and you don't mind if they get shot at in the process. You want to attack move everything all the time. This is a really good idea to do. You can see here down in this combat, he's using his 
CQC infantry really wisely in groups of two. Often in your infantry micro, you want to try to make sure you use groups of at least two guides when possible. It's going to just easily overwhelm groups of one all the time. So 2v1 is always much stronger when possible. Try to do it. So we can see here what my opponent is doing is exactly what you want to do with your mortars and other support weapons. So he's got one guard, Gavardia DP here. Solid, fine infantry unit. Not strong, though. Definitely not stronger than my Schutzen or my Sturmstutzen. But he's using these little 50 millimeter mortars to suppress them, pin them down, and basically take them out of the fight. And then push forward. So he's actually he's, he's winning this fight with a single infantry unit. Back up here. He's very easily winning this fight with a single infantry unit. My shoots and finally come back online. Trying to keep these guys in cover. For some reason, my shoots have moved out of cover, so this is a very bad move on my play on my part. And he's going to immediately bring in that mortar again. And he's actually going to use smoke this time to smoke off his infantry and give them time to fall back. He's also using a leader. Leader usage is extremely important. I can't say this enough in your infantry fights and micro. you got to be using leaders. Higher veterancy troops are going to win the day every single time. We can also see here the moment my flamers get too close to the edge of the forest, I'm immediately falling them back. This is not where they belong. They they can't shoot more than 100 some meters, I think only 100, and putting them on the edge of a forest is a stupid place for them to be. Shoots and belong in the edge of a forest so they can fire at troops that are coming in. You can see I'm getting mortared here. But it's a blind mortar, and I had already moved them and probably have moved off. So shoots and are what belong on the edge here, or any kind of long range infantry, I should say, not just shoot, but in this case, my shoots and these guys belong in the forest with this minimal range so that they can take advantage of their flamethrowers. Don't leave them on the edge of forest. Immediately fall them back if they ever get close. One thing to remember when you fall back your troops, they only fall back a limited range. If you want them to keep falling back, you're going to have to remember to hit the retreat button again. So you can see here, my guys are falling back. They're taking reduced damage. Any moment now, they're gonna stop falling back because they've fallen back sufficiently. And then I'm going to hit the fallback button again to try to save them. Now here I hit the fallback, hoping they could get away from these saperies, but it's unlikely they will. Once again, you can see how powerful these mortars are. I immediately fall back, but it's just not fast enough and they're able to surrender my troops. Remember, most of the time surrendering is what you're trying to do. You're not actually trying to full on kill the opponent's infantry. It takes too long. It's way too time consuming. It's actually way too resource intensive. You can see I'm falling the storm system back again to get him out of fire. It's way too resource intensive and it's not very efficient. It's going to waste your infantry essentially. It's going to waste the time you have with your infantry trying to wait for them to actually kill the opponent's infantry. You want to surrender whenever possible. And the leader prevents that as well. Your own leader prevents the opponent from doing that. Now this is, he immediately falls back. The moment he sees I actually have infantry here to defend this, he falls back because these are close range infantry. You don't want to just throw them across. Don't think, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna make it across this opening. You're not going to. You're going to get pinned down halfway across and your troops are just going to die and have to fall back anyway. So that is not the way, that's not the way to attack and he, and he correctly fell back immediately from that attack. I can't say enough how important it is when things aren't going your way to immediately fall back. So we can see here my shoots and have ended up in a 2v1 versus these Sapri. Now these Sapri's are both weak and only a little for one and a lot for the other one. But even so, they're easily pinning down my shoots in here. And I immediately try to move them back. I should have simply just fell them back, but instead I try to walk them back. You should immediately just fall back, and this is why you should, because your troops are just going to die. Sitting there getting shot is not the way. You can see me immediately falling these buys back because I'm not, I'm not going to win this fight. It's 2v1, even though my shoots are higher quality troops than these Gavardia. They're out in the open. They're just not going to win. So you might as well fall back immediately. Don't wait to retreat. That's a, that's a mistake a lot of noobs make. They, they just sit there and they think, oh, my guy will come out of suppression and start fighting again. The thing is, they'll come out of suppression with maximum suppression on and they'll just immediately repin. So there's really not a lot of reason to leave your troops there to fight. See, I should be falling this guy back. He's already pinned. He's no longer contributing to my to my battle power in any way. I should be falling him back. I'm not, probably because I'm looking somewhere else. At this very moment in time, there we go, finally falling back. And that is something to consider. Your eyes can only be so many places at once, which means you don't really have time to sit there and wait for the perfect time to retreat your infantry. If they seem like they're in any sort of losing position, just immediately fall them back. So you can see my opponent immediately falls his Gavardias back here because they don't have a chance of winning, so they just run away. 
This is a good example of making sure to use the right troops in the right positions. This is a, the perfect fighting area for Sherm shoots and you want to make sure they're staying in this lighter cover area so they don't come out of their 300 meter MP44 range. He recognized that immediately and fell back, which was correct because he had absolutely no chance to get this infantry. And he knows I immediately bring them back into the green cover. Instead of pushing them forward, There's I have nothing to gain by pushing them up into here. I'm just losing my good cover. If the enemy tries to get this flag, I'm, I can easily see most of this hill anyway from that position. So making sure that you don't unnecessarily push your troops into bad cover is a big thing to make sure you stay alive. Here you can see a great attack on his part. He's using a lot of infantry. If you're going to make open ground pushes like this, you're going to need to use a lot of guys. There's no reason to use one or two. They're going to get immediately pinned. And you can see then they can actually apply their weight of fire to overwhelm defenses, especially when they're lighter defenses. And then he has support behind them. This is the way to make a push, everyone. You want to combine your two. See, I immediately fall back. I know I have absolutely no chance of winning this fight. He has support weapons behind his infantry. That way, the second defenses reveal themselves, he can open up and really start doing damage to those defenders, suppressing them and allowing his infantry to continue to push forward. If you're going to make an open ground assault, that's the way to do it. Here you can see again, he's got all his troops in cover. He's overwhelming my lighter defenses here, not being afraid to fall back where things are not going well. A big part of this game that people underappreciate is part of the, uh, the way to win is to keep your troops alive. Whenever your troops die, they're now useless. You can see I'm basically trapped in this coverless pocket. He's using his support troops to cut my guys down very easily. I am able to pin some down. I'm trying to use my mortar to help help out the situation and try to pin some of his guys down. Finally killed his leader over there. I fall these guys back the second they get pinned because they're not useful anymore. Especially in this general heavy fighting area. They're not, they're not going to come back in time to make a difference in the fight. Now I'm trying to supply some support with my own armor here, as well as my mortars up onto the hill. Even though the tank gun doesn't do very much damage, even a little bit of support fire makes a big difference. If I had had the infantry units available at this point, this is how I should have made this attack. I should have used this nice line of support I have built up, and I could have very successfully pushed up onto this hill finally. Instead, I had piecemeal attacked onto this hill with my infantry units instead of using this very strong line of support that I built up. See, the machine guns, the pack, all of this could have covered this top part of the hill at least and given me a chance to at least get into cover. The weak, obviously, the worst part of this attack is right here pushing up onto this totally coverless hill. Here would be another example where you want to fall back immediately from this situation. I didn't, and I even pushed these guys forward into the lighter cover. You can see I immediately changed that because I want to get back into this cover. Try to give myself a good fighting chance to, to give that. Calling in again troops that actually are built for this kind of fighting. The Sturm shoots in in this situation. I knew I could easily overwhelm these Gavardia DP if I used the correct units. And I don't want to fight them on equal, equal term. My big light grenadier, yes, is a higher quality unit than these guys. But when overwhelmed 2 to 1, I at least have a chance of beating these guys with the green cover here. And don't forget that even an infantry unit with one health can still wield the machine gun on the squad. So keeping even your low health units alive means you get that many more machine guns when you go to fight. So I want to see here, this is how you use things like Nebelwerfers and heavy artillery. I call in the strike, or mortars even. I call in strike. I don't see these guys currently in my own view. I can see uh, from our view, we can see that this was a fabulous strike. Kills a lot of guys. That's not the point. The point is that I immediately move my Begleit Grenadiers forward. My goal is to surrender them. It's not to necessarily kill them with my Neville Warfare. That was never the plan. The plan was to hopefully suppress anything that was in this position, move my guys forward, and cap them off. My opponent recognizes this immediately and falls back, which is the right choice because he would have lost these troops otherwise. And now he still will have these two basically healthy squads. They're both a little down, but he will have these two healthy squads here to fight back in the future instead of completely losing them and having no troops that's once again that concept when your troops get pinned and bombed even if you desperately want this position they're not holding it anyway if they're suppressed well you can see over here how great the opponent has built this defense up. i have no chance of ever pushing through this i would need some sort of off map which my deck doesn't have infantry in all the great cover they have armor here and there to stop that support weapons to bring down fire these little 50 mil mortars are doing so much damage to me, I've actually never seen them be so effective ever uh, in my life. But having some sort of mortar effect, some sort of support range weapon is so, so important for being successful in infantry combat. Because again, it's all about suppression. 
Infantry combat is not about essentially killing your enemy's infantry. It's about suppressing them so that you can capture them and win the combat. That's important to understand. It's about suppression, not about killing. It's not about killing infantry units. It's about suppressing them so that you can eventually capture them out. That's the idea. I hope you all enjoyed this video of how to micro your infantry more effectively. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more Steel Division 2 content here at Attack Power Gaming. Have a fantastic day.